So we have been talking, um, we're staying within uh, chapter 9, and I trust that we'll wrap it up here soon. And we have talked through the conversion of Saul. Uh, we talked about how he was a chosen vessel, how, uh, and Minute spoke last time, how he uh, suffered much for his namesake. And Justin, and both Minu and Justin described his conversion experience. And I just want to continue uh, the study of chapter 9 and highlight one specific portion, uh, which was what we, I just read today. So what was happening there was Saul, or who now was going to be uh, known as Paul, he had uh, received Christ, as we all know, right? And he stayed in Damascus for a while, and he was preaching to the people there. So he didn't wait. You know, he didn't wait for this time to become a disciple, right? He immediately considered himself a disciple of Christ. So I want you to remember that. And so he immediately went forward and was preaching, and so much so that they were... They were so worried about it that the Jews even was trying to kill him. So they had to escape, and, and they had to like help him escape in a basket uh, down a wall uh, out of Damascus. So his, you know, he considered himself a disciple. And then he came to, uh, when he came to Jerusalem later, he wanted to go to the disciples and which were the apostles at that time, uh, and he was trying to see them, and they did not want anything to do with him because they thought he was the old persecutor. And they were afraid of him, and they believed not, even though they heard about who he was, what happened to him, and they believed not that he was a disciple. So... And that's the word I want to focus on today. It could be that maybe they half believed in his conversion, right? And maybe they thought there's some truth to the matter, but they did not believe that he was an actual disciple. Now, what is the difference? So this is the man who later in Philippians wrote, right? He was born of the tribe of Benjamin. He was educated at the feet of Gamaliel. He was at a very high position in the, uh, amongst the Jews, right? He, hold, he held all the traditions and the laws in a high esteem. But when he had the revelation of Christ, he was immediately transformed and he counted himself a disciple. And he, he did not have to wait and go to Bible school. He did not have to wait for years and years uh, to go to a church and, and become a disciple, he was immediately a disciple of Christ. It's just that the apostles back in Jerusalem had a hard time believing it, right? Um, and these are the people, so uh, uh, these are the people like Peter, even though he gave his life for Christ, he had a hard time in many times even accepting that uh, Jesus was going to reach the Gentiles, right? Uh, Christ had to appear to him, uh, in, a, uh, in a vision uh, in Cornelius, uh, when he, before he went to minister to Cornelius, right? So, so they had a little bit of harder time letting go of their traditions. They had a little bit harder time getting, letting go of kind of their Jewish heritage and culture of insulation. But Paul, as soon as he had the revelation of Christ, he considered himself a disciple and he had the zeal, right? He he went forth to preach the gospel immediately. Right? That's why he said in uh, Philippians that I count all things as dung for the knowledge of the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. He thought that was far superior than anything he had learned thus far. All the traditions, all the things that he had grown up in. He immediately was a disciple. So, and that's a question we have, I want to pose to us this morning, is that if somebody saw us or knew us, 
would they have a hard time believing that we are a disciple of Christ? I didn't say, would they have a hard time believing that we are a church member or we're known as a Christian or we are a member of Hebron or anything like that. My question is, if people knew us, are they going to be able to believe that we are a disciple of Christ? Now, what is a disciple? A disciple is somebody that is a follower, a, a pupil, or a, a student of somebody else, right? So when you're a disciple of Christ, you are looking to him to completely learn everything you have, relearn everything you know from him, that your full confidence and trust is in him wherever he takes us and you are willing to let go of everything, right? And that is a disciple. So the question again is, if somebody were to uh, think about each one of us, right? Ask that in your heart. Will they believe that we are a disciple of Christ? And that's the question that we have to ask ourselves. Are we a disciple of Christ? We are trying to bring many members into church, Right? We have ministries all around the world we try to support to bring members. But are we adding disciples is the question. Are we ourselves disciples of Christ? So I'm going to uh, turn your attention to a story um, that is a little bit obscure. I mean, some of us may not have read it, which I don't blame you. It's very obscure uh, and we don't often talk about the story. So I'm going to uh, it is actually over the course of two chapters in Judges 17 and 18, okay? And you, it, it's fine if you haven't read it before, but I will try to summarize kind of what is the story, and then I'll come back to uh, and tie it back to my uh, message, okay? So, so if you'll bear with me. So there was a man, uh, so as it says in Judges chapter 17. So I'm going to just uh, recount the story here for our benefit. So there's a man of Mount Ephraim, uh, and his, his name was Micah. Okay, so one day, he went to his mom, and he said, um, you know those 1,100 shekels, right? It's a very valuable, shekels of silver. Uh, you remember all that money that you were so upset about that you lost, and you were cursing, and you were telling in my ear, uh, in my ear about this money that you lost, right? And he, she, he said, actually, I took it, and here it is. And he gave it back to his mom. And his mom said, oh, you're blessed of God because I actually had dedicated this money, believe it or not, for you so that I may make you a graven image, so that I may make you an idol, okay, and a molten image. And so now I will, since I have got this money back, I am going to go and do that. So she took 200 shekels out of the 1,100. She kept the most of it for herself. Um, and she took the 200 shekels, and she went and did that and made her son uh, a grave, an idol, uh, and gave it to him. And Micah, the son, took, uh, made a whole house of gods, right? So he took that idol, made a whole temple, with that idol, and he made an ephod, which is meant for priests, actually. And and he uh, terif it says in verse 5, he took an ephod and teraphims, and he consecrated one of his sons so he, and made him a priest. So he not only made an idol, a temple for the idol, and he took one of his sons and made him a priest for this in service of this idol. Okay, these are Israelites, by the way. So remember that. And so, and then at some point, there was another a Levite who's meant to be a priest, he left where he was supposed to be, right? Uh, Beth in Bethlehem, Judah, he left his home and he was wandering around. Sometimes when we wander and you seek out something better, right? Sometimes we seek out something better, it might not always be where God intended us to be, right? Maybe God intended us to be where we are and do what he told us. So anyway, so this Levite who's a priest, he wandered, and he came upon Micah, okay, who the man who made the idol and the, had the idol and the temple. And he, when he met Micah, the Micah said, "Where are you going?" 
And so the Levite said, I'm just sojourning, so I might find a place. So sometimes, you know, we go from place to place, church to church, people, friend to friend, to find something, right? We'll be ourselves, sometimes don't know what we're looking for. We're just find, trying to find and fill this emptiness in our soul. And we're wandering. So Micah said, oh, why don't you come into my house? And I see I have this temple. I have this graven image. Now, if you come into my house, I can also say that I have a priest in my house. That way, you know, I can satisfy, you know, my desire to have an idol. And also I can satisfy the fact that I'm an Israelite and I need a priest so that I can, you know, follow all these rules and regulations I'm supposed to follow. So this Levite, who's meant to be a priest, remember, he was very happy and he, because he was offered, you know, I'll give you 10 shekels of silver every year, is what Micah said. So he was going to get a salary and he was going to get a suit and some food. And so the Levite went and dwelt uh, with Micah. Okay? And so, and as he was living there, um, in verse 13, Micah finally said, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. He said, Oh, I have a priest, or I have a pastor that I like to listen to. He will tell me whatever I want to hear, because my ears are itching. And so because of that, I know God will do me good, because he'll protect me, give me whatever I want. Because I have this priest in my house now to do, do whatever I tell, tell him to do. Then now, and another, to make the story even more complicated, there's this tribe of Dan. So they didn't have an inheritance. Now, was, all of Israelites were given an inheritance, right? So these people did not have an inheritance. So they uh, consulted their elders and said, why don't you go look for a land? So these five men came to spy out the land, and they came to the house of Micah, and he and uh, and they saw this uh, priest living there. They understood what was happening. And this priest prayed for these men who are spies and said, God will be with you. Okay, so this priest who was kind of compromised. And now these people went and looked and they came upon this land called Laish. Everybody say Laish. Um, and so they came to this land and here's what they said about the land. Um, when they came back, they spied out this land, and they came back and reported back to their home base, and they said, when you go, you shall come unto a people secure and to a la large land, for God has given it to your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. So Laish was a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. So they were very happy. Oh, wow, this sounds like America. There's no a place where there's no want of anything in the earth. We better go get that place. So they send 600 people with these original five spies, and they went to uh, Laish, and they conquered it. Right on the way, they stopped at where? Guess where? They went to Micah's house. And Micah wasn't there for some reason. And they saw the priest. And they told the priest, you need to come with me. And also, you know what? Bring that graven image, the idol with you. And the Micah, uh, priest was like, I can't. I, I'm, I'm actually a priest at this church. I'm sorry. And the 600 men were like, well, would you rather be a priest for this small little church with five people? Or would you rather be even a mega church with 500, 600 people? You think which is better for you? And the priest was like, man, you know what? I'd rather be a mega church pastor and be popular. And so this priest took the idol with him and went with the 600 people. So Micah, he was afraid. He was upset. And his, all his neighbors were upset. Oh, my gosh, what happened? You took my idol and my priest? What am I going to do now? So he was upset. Sometimes we're upset about things that were actually idols for us when we lose them. Maybe a thought to ponder is are we upset many times because God took away an idol that was in our heart? And maybe God removed that so he may shake us a little bit.
But Micah went, went after them. And the 600 men were like, well, you better be careful. You see all these people. We can beat you up real good right now. So you decide what you want to do. So Micah realized they were too strong and they went back. And so these people then went and conquered the land and they established this community in Laish. And they actually, they were peace-loving people in Laish. And they killed all of them. And they took over their land. And they, that's where they set up this idol. And they lived in that land with all their family. Okay, so now, coming back to, are you a disciple? See, we have come to a place where we have to examine in our community. Are we trying to be a disciple or are we trying to be a church member? That's the question I have for you today. If somebody gave a witness of us, will they be hard, have a hard time believing we are a disciple? Many of us are like these Micahs who just want a church experience so that they can be satisfied in that part of their uh, of their conscience, but they're not willing. Not only are they not willing, they've actually built a temple for the idols that they have. Whatever that might be, whether it's your job, your family, your children, your house, your cars, your social status, your followers on Instagram, whatever that is. You have set up these idols, and yet you just want to be part of a church so that you can have this church experience to check that box. And again, when I say you, uh, the fingers pointed me as well. So we've come to this place. And so that's why we get upset when our, you know, when, uh, you know, so we've taken, so Jesus, uh, you know, want us to follow his doctrines and his commandments, right? And he, uh, and he want us to live a holy life. But those things, his commandments and his doctrines cannot be separated from Jesus. Those are together. So what we've done is we rip them apart. We want, you know, a, a safe community for ourselves, right? We want an Indian church uh, so that we can preserve these rules and regulations so that we can preserve our culture. But we, are we removing the idols? Have we removed Jesus? Have we removed disciples from the church? Do we only care about increasing the members of our church? Do we care about committees and bylaws and all these things that are man-made and our traditions, but are we making disciples? See, this tribe of Dan, the 600 men that came, are, are like the disciples we make, but they're stronger than us. It's our generation. The people that come after us. The tribe of Dan that came is like, so what we sow is what we're growing in our generation. They're going to be more powerful than you. They are, we are not going to be able to stand up to the 600 men. And if we don't come back to where we are seeking discipleship, so it's not about preserving our culture. It's not about preserving, so making sure that we have these laws so that our, you know, we, we're making sure we can control everything. Or have a uh, you know a, uh, you know a church system or a priest or whatever that will do what we tell them to do, but rather we come to be, come back to becoming a discipleship. We're gonna lose the generation after us because they're gonna be stronger than us, and not only that, they will build this idol and they carry on. This started at that mother, right, who wanted to, she could have instructed Micah to say. You know, I'm going to use this money for, you know, uh, to honor God, right? But she put that idol in his heart. So we, when we feed our children to follow the idols that we have, right, of success, of, of uh, nice uh, uh, things, when that becomes, the, um, again, I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, don't focus on the things, <coughs> excuse me, uh, things themselves. But my question is, what idols are ruling in your heart? And are they keeping them, keeping you, the worship team, come forward, uh, from becoming a disciple? 
not becoming from being a disciple. Because if you are decided to follow Christ, there's no time, you know, there's no training period to become a disciple. You are either a disciple immediately or you're not. Okay, so you grow in maturity as a Christian, right? But there's no training period. We have this, all this misunderstanding of, oh, we have to become a disciple. No, you are a disciple if you say Christ is your Lord and your master. The question you have to ask yourself is, am I a church member or am I a disciple? Because there's no difference. So eventually the tribe of Dan is going to be too big, become too big. It already is. This is why we get upset that when we lose, because we want, you know, church, uh, the church system to protect us. We want our political leaders to protect us. So that's why when the people, when the church system is broken down or, or the people we want are not in power, we, we're afraid because our, our community is not protected. Uh, we, nobody's there to preserve the things we've c- considered sacred. But if we're a disciple, we know that God is in control. He will lead me in green pastures, no matter what is happening around us. No matter what is happening around us. Paul, that's why Paul said, I count everything as dumb for the excellency and knowledge of Christ because I am a disciple. He said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So the question is, are we willing to be a disciple or to just be a church member? This is why in Psalm 90 it says, Lord, thou has been our dwelling place in all generation, from generation to generation to generation, we are making disciples, not church members. It starts in our home. Remove the idols, and we can make disciples in our home. May God bless you with these words.